Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be giving you an introduction into story points and estimations. estimations. This is probably one of the hardest things to do and to master in Agile, and I'm just going to give you my two cents and my perspective and how I typically do it with my teams. So if you haven't already, please make sure you smash that subscribe button, drop a like, and if you have any questions, maybe you disagree, maybe you agree with what I'm gonna be teaching you today. So I wanna know about it. Drop it in the comment section below and let's get a conversation going. Thank you very much and let's jump into the video. All right, for today's video, we're gonna be going back to atlassian.com slash agile slash project management and then slash estimation. I wanted to give you the official documentation, some of the stuff that I use for inspiration for um, this is what I look to for guidance there's obviously if you look up story points and estimation on the internet you're gonna get a lot of different results however because Jira is made by Atlassian you know how Atlassian is they do things a little bit different than everybody else and they don't always subscribe to the vanilla version of agile so I wanted to show you how Atlassian interprets story points and estimation because again that I use this as an influence for me and the tool is obviously designed to work with this kind of mentality so let's jump into what Atlassian has here and discuss. Uh, this is really going to be a little bit more of a discussion uh, than anything else because everybody that you ask, anybody, if you just go walking around the street and you're asking people about, hey, how do you use story points? You're going to get a million different answers. The official documentation from like Mike Cohn or, or people like of that stature, you're going to not get a hard answer. You're going to get a, this is what in theory story points are. But what I found is that that's not very effective. That's not very helpful to people or to teams that are just starting out for the very first time. They need something a little bit more concrete, something a little bit more valuable, something more tangible, something more practical, because just saying that a story point value of one versus a story point value of 21 needs to be orders of magnitude more complex, that is just difficult for somebody that's starting out in their journey to grasp and to actually make into action. A lot of teams struggle when they're listening to this type of guidance because, and, and I, I can say this from personal experience because I worked with hundreds of teams when we've been trying to define what should story points mean and it's just, it's really, really hard to nail down. It's really hard to get external sources of information to have a clear definitive guide as to this is what a one should represent, this is what a two, a three, five, so on and so forth. And don't even get me started with, are we doing Fibonacci or some other uh, numerical method? Because I am a hardcore believer that story points should and must be and will always be forever and ever, don't come at me in the comment section, but forever and ever should be uh, based on Fibonacci. It's just, it feels right. It's it's There's no logical reason as to why it needs to be that way, but it's just what I've been doing for the last nine years. It's what how I was taught. It's how most of the industry does it. And so anything that's not Fibonacci just doesn't feel right. But just keep in mind that your story point numbers can be whatever the heck you want, whatever your team agrees to. At the end of the day, if you learn anything from this video or from this series of videos that I'm gonna be doing on story points, here's the key takeaway, right? And this is going to be that at the end of the day, whatever decision your team decides to do, whatever strategy, whatever technique you all pick, the most important thing is that you and your team are consistent and they understand it. That means that team A and team B, whatever those numbers represent at the end of the day, they mean the same thing to that team. They can be anything. They don't have to agree with what I'm gonna be talking about in this video, but as long as every team member and your organization or your company agrees on these basic fundamentals as however you define them, that to me is more important than doing it the cone way, right? It's more important than following what Atlassian recommends. And and so as long as you as long as you can do that, I think you're gonna be in a good in a good position to be successful with story points. Where I find a lot of teams struggling is they just can't agree. They can't determine or, or there's no clear communication and then there's miscommunication because some teams will give a value of one, some representation or some meaning and other teams will give it a completely different meaning. And when a scrum master comes or a product owner comes and looks at a two stories, 
that both are a value of one, but those values of one have completely different representations, that's when this whole estimation stuff crumbles. This is where things start breaking down because that communication is not clear to everybody. And so what one person assumes a value of one means is going to be different for that other person. So I would recommend, again, if you take anything away from this video is get that consistency in your team. Make sure it is very clearly articulated across your organization, your team, your group, wherever, whoever's doing estimations, but just make sure everybody agrees on the same basic principles here, because if you can get that, you're going to set your team up for success. But if your team's bickering and there's miscommunications and misunderstandings, and there's ambiguity behind what these numbers represent, that's when you're going to be having a lot of trouble. And this is where story points get frustrated. So anyways, let's jump into Atlassian's documentation and see what they're are all about. So estimation is hard. Heck yeah, it is. Estimation is probably one of the most controversial topics that I deal with when I'm coaching teams. It's one of the hardest things to explain to a team. And it's really, really challenging to stay true to the way story points were designed by the creators of Agile. It's, it's hard to stay true to it and make it something that's tangible, that is actionable. Because a lot of teams like if, well, let's just jump into this documentation here, right? So for software developers, among the most difficult thing, right? It's, it's not the most difficult aspects of the job, but it's really hard, right? You got to take into account a bunch of factors that help the product owner make decisions that affect the entire team and the business, right? So there's a lot at stake and, and it's one of the hardest things, right? And it's asking engineers, and I don't want to go too far into this topic here, this little tangent here, but this is, maybe I'll reserve this for another video, but asking a software engineer to estimate software is really, really hard. Software's a beast. Software's uncontrollable, especially when you have churn in your team and you have different people working, like you have senior people that architected the system and then maybe they left to another team or to another company. You're hiring new talent. They're coming in. They have to go and refigure out what everything does in the code base. And so asking a junior level engineer to estimate some new code or how long it's going to take them to fix something or to create a new feature on a completely new code base, it's going to be a very challenging ask. You're not going to yield perfect results. And unlike traditional project management projects like building a bridge or a building or anything else, all types of other engineering, right? Those are, those are more like finite games. Those are, there's a clear starting and there's a clear end to tasks, right? There's so much you can do when you're building a bridge. Everything's kind of known. I mean, you do have some unknowns, but it's mostly known. But when you're building software, it's a whole different beast. It's a whole different game. It's an infinite game. Software is never technically done. And so it's really hard to estimate um, without, like, without being accurate, like, how long is it going to take you to do something? This is one of the most challenging things. So... Uh, but let's just keep going with the documentation here, right? So everybody from uh, developers to upper management is prone to getting their undies in a bunch about it. <laughs> and yes, they do. So make, but that's a mistake. Agile estimation is just that, an estimate, not a bloodbath. A lot of teams, uh, just to kind of sit on this topic for just another second here, a lot of your project managers, your traditional project managers, or your stakeholders, like your executives, they are very concerned about a schedule and a budget. And when you're doing your estimates, those estimates are directly influencing how long the sketch is going to be and how much is it going to cost to build this thing. And so executives, stakeholders, project managers, they're hammering you down because they need to know because their job is to keep this thing on schedule and on budget. And so when you're being asked to estimate how long it's going to take you to build some unknown functionality of some untamable beast, it is really, really a struggle. And people do get their undies in a bunch. It is really hard. I'm not going to lie. Estimating is probably one of the hardest things to do here. It's with respect to agile, but it doesn't have to be too hard. And it, I think us as humans, we make this harder than it needs to be. Because if you follow some of the basic guidelines that I'm going to be covering over the next few videos, because I'm going to be basically talking here, looking at Jira or looking at the Elastic documentation, but then we're going to go into Jira and then I'm going to give you practical best practices of how I coach teams, of how I recommend 
teams to use story points so that they're actually valuable and not just friction points. Because the second something like this becomes a friction point, people are going to get frustrated. You're going to get arbitrary numbers. People are just going to give you the numbers you want to hear for the sake of not arguing, for the sake of just getting it done. But realistically, the team is not is going to lose that trust. That team is going to lose that accountability, that communication with each other. And they're going to start hiding the real problems. And all you're going to see at the surface is a perfect world where the points always add up. And, and keep in mind, I am telling you this from experience. I've worked in teams where they have budgeted, they have bid for a contract for millions of dollars of contract work based on estimates of story points. So they told basically like their their customers saying, we will do this in like 2000 points. And so what, what does that mean for the engineers at that point? You have 2000 points as a bucket and you better make all the stories and the bugs and the tasks fit within that 2000 story point budget. That is not the right way of doing this, but I'm just telling you, this is what I've seen in the past, which is kind of what's influencing the, the, the discussion point here that I'm trying to have with you. Going back to this documentation here, uh, let's just keep going, right? So collaborating with the product owner in agile development, the product owner's task with prioritizing the backlog, the order list of the work that contains short descriptions. Uh, product owners capture the requirements from the business. So they don't always understand the details. And this is a really good point here that I also want to drive home. Your product owner is going to basically tell you what's important, but it's up to the engineering team to kind of figure out how and how complex or how hard from an engineering, from a technical perspective, is this story going to actually be? And so the engineering team is going to begin with the estimation process. Questions usually arise about requirements and user stories, and that's good. Those questions help the entire team understand the work more fully. Let's see. Uh, agile estimation is a team sport, which basically means it involves everyone. And so... Uh, everyone, developers, designers, testers, everyone on the team. So it's key. So each team, mem team member brings a different perspective on the product and the work required to deliver a user story. For example, if product management wants to do something that seems simple, like supporting a new web browser, development and QA need to weigh in because their experience has taught them what dragons might be lurking beneath the surface. Likewise, design changes require not only a design team input, but that of development and QA as well, leaving part of the broader product team out of the estimation process creates lower quality estimates, lower morale because key contributors don't feel included and compromises the quality of software. Don't, so don't let your team feel fall victim of estimates made in a vacuum. It's a fast track to error or to failure. Now this last point here, cause I do want to wrap up this video here is let's talk about story points versus hours. When you go and look at the official, like agile estimate, how to use story points, you're not going to see hours anywhere. In fact, most of this documentation is going to like put hours like in this like voodoo type of thing of like, do not, do not, whatever you do. And I kind of believe this, right? Whatever you do, do not associate like one hour worth of work to one story point. I've seen teams do this. I've seen them take, this is a five hours worth of work. We're going to give it five story points. Do not do that. That is, that is really bad. That is not what story points were made for. But with that said, I do believe there is merit in having hours in your discussion and your involvement as to what those story points represent. Story points are supposed to represent complexity, right? They're supposed to level of effort. And, and essentially, if, if one item is a one and you look at an item that is worth two points, that two points should be twice as hard than that item that was a one pointer. And so from that perspective, it's easy from a theoretical perspective to say, well, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, a story that is worth one point is twice as easy than a story that is worth two points, right? But where things really start breaking down is what does that actually mean? From, from a technical perspective, from a team perspective, what is the actual difference, right? From a tangible, like something you can touch, what is something that is twice as hard? Because again, all this is just so hard to even estimate. So what I like to tell my teams, and again, you might be coming at me in the comments, but feel free to drop the comments. I'd like, I'd, I would love to gain your perspective. This is just from over the last nine years that I've been doing this. This is what works. This is what I see teams being able to actually use, implement, and actually gain traction with respect to their points. But what I have seen work is putting a skill putting a, a relative estimate, not an exact estimate, but putting a relative estimate and say, hey, this work I think is going to take me a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes to maybe an hour or two. 
And when that is the case, when you can say this task or this story is so easy that I think, I perceive that I can get this done and in no more than like an hour or two, that's what I tell teams, give that a value of one. Once you start kind of going up from there and, and their scale is really dependent on what you and your team want to do. But from there, that like that simple 20 minute, 30 minute, one hour, two hour tasking, that's my one. The next we go like, okay, so this is gonna take me like a half a day. I like to tell teams, if you think you can come in in the morning and you'll have this done by lunch, give that a two, right? And now again, you don't have to necessarily agree what these numbers or what I'm telling you, but what I want you to take away is the scale, right? The estimate. It's a lot easier for a team to say, okay, so here's a task. I think based on the information I have, I can probably knock this out in half a day. Or it's very easy for them to say, you know what, this is a little bit more complex. I'm probably going to need a day or two. Now, a day or two to me usually means like three points, right? And so now I have a very clear delineage between here's a task that I can basically do in my sleep, a, a one pointer, versus here's a task that I can get done as soon as I come in, clear state of mind. I'm just going to focus on this. I can get this done by lunch. That's a two. And, uh, and now here's a task that says, you know what? I might have to do some research. I might have to do some development. I might have to talk to a couple people and it's going to probably take me a day or two. And so here's a three. And then you can just scale up from there. Now, the last thing I'll do to wrap this video up because it is getting a little long is you want to be mindful of having story points that are too, or, or stories that are too big in story points, right? So once you start getting into the eight, the 13, the 21 uh, pointers, that's just a big red flag to me. You want to start decomposing that work into smaller stories. And let me know in the comments if, if you typically have large story points and you want to know my tips or advice for that. Um, I'm not sure if it warrants a video, but I just want to leave you with be mindful of having stories that are 21 points, right? Depending on whatever that 21 means. But 21 usually to me is a really big number uh, with respect to if we're doing the Fibonacci sequence. And if you have a story that's 21 points or even 13 points, and you're coming into a sprint and you're you're pulling one of those in, that is a recipe for a problem. That is basically ensuring that your team member is going to fail because any story that is that massive in scope, right, that the team estimated it to be a 13 or a 21, that just tells me it's like, we have so many unknowns. And that to me tells me you need to start decomposing that big giant story and breaking it down to more bite size. So ideally, my general rule of thumb, and this is what I'm going to leave you with here to close this video out is make sure your story points don't exceed like five. I know this is not a general rule of thumb and it's not gospel, but when your stories are so well written, the scope is so well contained that your team can confidently say, wow, that's easy. That should take me half a day. That's when you know you got yourself a good story. When your team's looking at it and scratching their heads and going, huh, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's when your story is not very well written. So you take that, whatever you want it. Let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation. I'm interested to hear your perspective. What are you using? What, what style, what technique, what guidance do you give your teams? What are you using for your teams? What's working for you? This is what I've been kind of sharing and preaching, but I'd love to hear from you. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Drop a like. And again, if you have any any controversial topics you want to talk about here, let me know in the comment section. If you have an opinion about what I just spoke about here with respect to story points, let me know. And make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be basically jumping into Jira next and showing you how to do story points inside of Jira. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.